<laughs> this movie would not work with millennials. Thank God for Gen <laughs> Xers. Because millennials would be like, I always knew it would end like Th- this. This is where it ends. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Franchise Frights Podcast. Hi, Mandy. Hello, hello, hello. How are you? I'm good. What did you do today? I put up Halloween decorations inside. You did? It's all spooky. And for those people who are listening to this, and they're like, wait a minute, it's like October 26th. What are you doing just putting your Halloween decorations up? We're actually recording this on September 19th. Yes. Yeah. And it's all rainy. And I lit fall candles. And it's awesome. Yeah. It feels like fall. It feels like a happy day. They're starting to harvest the fields around us. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm ready. Yeah, it's coming. I've got Oktoberfest beers. Yeah. Life's good. Again, want to give a quick shout out to Molly Mac for making our wonderful logo for us. You can find her at Aunt Molly's Magic on Instagram. And we are about to record our third movie review episode. How cool is that? I don't know. It's scary. It's scary? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to hear some horror news? I would love to hear some horror news. Good, because I was going to read it anyway. Um, Eli Roth has made a full-length film out of his short from Grindhouse, Thanksgiving. Uh Uh-oh. And it will be in theaters... On November 17th. For Thanksgiving weekend? Yeah. Oh, that's exciting. I'm very excited. That's that's going to be a theater for sure. Yeah. Hopefully it's kind of campy. It better be. Like, uh. I want it to be the exact same tone as like his little vignette that mm-hmm. he filmed. Because that was awesome. Yeah. Other than that, I don't have any horror news. I don't either. I didn't see anything exciting. No, not really. Well... It kind of hurts because the writer strikes still, too. Yeah. That's that's putting a damper on things. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to crack into a LaCroix. Oh, what flavor of LaCroix are you cracking? The lemony one. I hoped you were going to say Pomplemousse. Pomplemousse. <laughs> oh. That, that sounded some, good. That was a good sound effect. If only it were beer, then it'd be better. Beer comes later. If I have a beer now, I'll be in bed by nine. <laughs> And I've got Buffy the Vampire Slayer to watch tonight. Woohoo! Okay, so today we are talking about the 2004 movie Saw, which Mandy and I saw in the theater together. Oh my gosh. A hundred years ago. On opening weekend. Yeah. And we did not like it then. I didn't, I did not like it at all. No. But we did have a couple of Smirnoff ices before we went in. Ooh. Maybe that was. Affecting our brains in a negative way? No. I think for the time, that movie was a lot. Yeah. Like, now I know what people think, like, what they thought when they saw, um, like, Halloween for the first time, Mm -hmm. or Friday the 13th. Like, nothing like that had been out at the time. Yeah. And it was, like you said, it was a lot. It was too much. Like, I walked out of that movie tired. But now I watch it, and I'm like... Like, oh, that's, it's really not that exciting. It's like, kind of tame, really. Yeah. So a lot has changed in uh, 19 years. Yeah. Which I think it's changed for the better because now we get movies like Halloween Kills. It's changed for the better movie-wise. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the world is fucked. Yeah. But... <laughs> uh, so little facts and figures section here on Saw. It was released October 29th. 2004 by Twisted Pictures, uh, directed by James Wan, written by Lee Wanell, music by Charlie, is it Clouser? You think? Closer? I, I don't know how to say it. 
Uh, produced by Greg Hoffman, Oren Coles, Mark Berg, starring... Oh, here's another one I don't know how to say. Carrie Elwes? I think it's Yules. Yules? I it? think it's Yules. It's like a Favre thing? I think so. Where the sounds are mixed around? I've never actually heard... I think... I should have looked that up. I know. I'm a bad... But for some reason, I think Elena just said it on my... F- or on Morbid. Oh, yeah. And I'm pretty sure, sure she said Yules. Ah. Yules. Weird British people. Carry Yules. And the incomparable Danny Glover, mm-hmm. Monica Potter, Michael Emerson. I have a fun story about Michael Emerson. You do? Yeah. My mom knows him. For real? Yep. He went to uh, South Tama High School. Or, uh, maybe he didn't. Maybe he just knew my uncle somehow. This is going to sound bad, but what, who did he play? He's Zep. Oh, okay. And And he's the... Oh, what's his name in Evil? Leland Townsend. Yes. Um, but yeah, he's like hung out at my mom's house a few times. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Like a million years ago. Yeah. Also starring the writer of the movie, Lee Wan L. Mm-hmm. Uh, runtime is 103 minutes. Budget was $1 million. Uh, the box office take was $103 million. So that did all right. It's a good profit. Yeah. If you can uh, get a 100% return. Yeah. It's not bad. No, not at all. No, not 100% return. 100 times return. I I knew what you meant. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, So, before you watched this critically, what were your initial impressions? As we said earlier, I had only seen this movie once. And I remember it being the beginning of the whole, like, torture porn craze. This and hostile. Yeah. Like... And I think of it as being really, really gory. And I don't really remember anybody famous being in it. Really? Uh Uh-uh. I definitely remember Danny Glover and Carrie Yules. Even throughout the whole movie, I wasn't sure if it was Carrie Yules. Because he looks different. His face just feels fuller. Mm Mm-hmm. Maybe he had a lot of salt. Yeah. Anything else? That's all I had to say about it. I wrote, when we saw this in the theater, I absolutely hated it. I called it the downfall of horror. Then I saw the second and third movies, and I loved those, so I went back to watch this one. And while I don't think it's the best movie in the franchise, I thought it did lay some really good groundwork. I'm excited to see where it goes from here. And some of the sequels were good. (laughs) (laughs) They're up to what, 10 now? Uh, yeah. Saw X comes out soon. Well, actually, as people listen to this, it's been out for like a week, I think. Mm. Uh, so ratings, uh, Rotten Tomatoes, critics gave this a 50%. Audience score was 84%. Uh, on IMDb, it has a 7.6 out of 10. And now for what the critics had to say about it. A writer for Variety called it a crude concoction sewn together from the severed parts of prior horror serial killer picks. Which I don't really agree with. I thought this was actually a pretty unique idea. Yeah. A writer for the San Francisco Chronicle said it combined B-movie acting with a twisted mindset and visual tricks designed to camouflage cheap effects. Also, uh, the killing scenes were amazingly evocative for such a low-budget movie. That's true. Yeah, I would agree with it. Um, And knowing that they only used $700,000 to make the movie... Yeah. That's impressive. And then 300000 to market it? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm very impressed with what they did. Um, Empire called it an uh, as good an all-out non-camp horror movie as we've had lately. Uh, Roger Ebert said it was well-made and acted and does what it does about as well as it could be expected to. <laughs> I like what Peter Travers from Rolling Stone had to say. He's my favorite movie reviewer. It's gross as hell. It is. That's that's it. Yeah. But it's more the concept that's gross. Yes. Like, I... It's that... It's the dingy dungeon bathroom. Yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot of feelings there. Sticking his hand in the poo. We'll get into it. (laughs) There was also um, lots of comparisons to David Fincher and Seven, which when I was reviewing this, I was like, that's kind of weird. Because I didn't really remember the movie at all. Mm -hmm. And I was like, why are we comparing it to Seven? But I can see it. Yes. You have the obsessed detective. Yeah. The uh, killer kind of toying with Mm -hmm. the cops. Yeah, I think it is very 
It's a similar movie. Mm-hmm. And I think James Wan kind of channeled David Fincher's directing style a little mm-hmm. bit for it. You know, everything was dark and kind of sepia toned. Yeah. And- well, and I think with a higher budget, they could have made it a more seven esque movie. Yeah. Rather than have to having to market it as a horror movie. Mm hmm. So you ready to jump into the plot? I guess. All right. So my first note was the opening titles leave a little bit to be desired. Mm-hmm. It was a very cheap title screen. It doesn't really fit with the tone of the movie, and it really only pertains to the very opening scene. Yeah. So the movie opens with Lee wan who plays Adam, uh, in a bathtub with a lighted keychain floating by his face. And then, I, I don't know, did he pull the drain plug with his foot when th- he was thrashing? He was thrashing, and I think his foot caught the chain. Okay. That's one thing about this movie is a lot of stuff's really dark. Yeah. And there's a lot of really quick cuts. Mm Mm-hmm. And sometimes I have a hard time. Yeah. (laughs) I watched it twice. And the second time I watched it, it it seemed as if it was an accident, but it happened. Like, his foot grabbed it. Yeah. Um, And we see the lighted keychain go down the drain. So Adam jumps out of the tub. He's coughing. He starts screaming in a very high-pitched voice. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. But we find out he's not in the room alone. The other voice in the room is much calmer, a little gruff, yeah, collected you, sounding. You, you didn't mention that he's uh, chained. Well, I, I haven't gotten to that part yet. <laughs> but he sees the chains before he, re- before he realizes that there's somebody else in the room. Yeah. And the voice tells him, there's no point in screaming. I already tried that. The other voice is kind of annoying. Well, yeah. I mean, he played Russ Wheeler in Days of Thunder, so. (laughs) I just meant more, like, he's so calm Mm -hmm. and chill. And I'm like, dude, this is not a situation to be calm or chill in. I actually wanted to talk about Dr. Lawrence Gordon's character. Uh Uh-huh. Do you think he's on the spectrum? Ooh. Like, I kind of feel like that's the way he was going with the character. I felt more like they were trying to... I mean, obviously, the plot tries to set him up so that you think he's the killer. Yeah. But I just assumed that that was part of it, was that he was supposed to be kind of creepy. Mm-hmm. But, hmm, that, that gives me some things to think about. Like, the way he's just not affected by anything. Mm-hmm. He's just like, oh, yeah, I just got to analyze my way out of this. But I think that also is because he's a surgeon. He's used to high-intensity... Yeah. Situations. So, yeah, they are chained to big, thick drain pipes. Mm-hmm. Doesn't look like fun. No. Um, the other voice in the room tells Adam that he would try, he would turn the lights on, but he doesn't know where they are. He doesn't. And then he turns them on. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, and apparently the room smells bad, which you can tell by looking at it. Yes. I can taste that room. I refer to that room as hell. (laughs) Uh, So the other voice finds the light switch and we get to see the room for the first time. It's gross. It's very gross. It's It's brown. I wrote, the room sucks. It it, it, (laughs) It looks like a rundown old factory bathroom. Yes, it's like an industrial type bathroom and it's the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. Uh, We see that there's a toilet Mm -hmm. uh, with a heart on it. And a dead body in the middle of the floor that looks like possibly a firearm suicide. Yep. Um, the body in the middle of the floor is holding a tape recorder, and he's wearing a fancy white boxers and undershirt combo. Mm-hmm. It's a must for the season. Yeah. Uh, Especially in that dingy, gross bathroom. It'll stay white forever. Oh, yeah. Uh, so we find out that the other voice in the room's name is Lawrence Gordon, and he is a surgeon. Sur- a surgeon? Surgeon? A surgeon. They talk, but they can't remember how they got there, why they're there. Um, they're like, hey, yeah, our legs are shackled to these pipes, and I'm not happy about it. Mm-hmm. So Adam says this is the first dead body he's ever seen. Okay, yeah. He's probably, what, 25-ish? He's never been to a funeral? Okay, and then he makes a comment about... <laughs> they don't move. They don't move. <laughs> and I was like, uh, duh. Yeah, that's it's kind of... a dead body. Yeah. Like, I've never expected a dead body to, like... Do you think that was improvising and it, he just left it in there? <laughs> I don't know. Because, I mean, he wrote the movie. I know. So you'd think as a writer, he might 
think of something better. Yeah. But so, then he's convinced that they've harvested his kidney. Yes. And he's lifting his shirt and looking at his back. <laughs> and uh, Dr. Gordon's like, no, no, your kidneys are still in there because otherwise you'd be dead or in a lot of pain. Mm-hmm. Dr. Gordon wants to figure out why they're there. Whoever abducted them could have killed them, but didn't. So mm-hmm. obviously they want something. But what? Which is a quick conclusion to jump to. He, he's a quick guy. Yeah. It like, <laughs> almost seems like he knows what's he, happening. He has all the answers. Dr. Gordon notices a clock on the wall that is brand new. So somebody wants them to know what time it is. Mm-hmm. He tries. <laughs> Dr. Gordon tries pushing the door, which is very obviously a sliding door. And he's just like palms flat on it, leaning into yes. it. Yes. So he doesn't know how doors work. but I felt like this part was really like almost like a video game. Yes. Because it was very like, here's the tools you'll use on your adventure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it felt like a survival horror. Yeah. So Adam finds a package in his pocket with a little micro cassette. Mandy's breaking stuff. That was me. Sorry. <laughs> uh, and guess what? Lawrence has one, too. <gasps> But Lawrence has more treats in his. He does. So Adam's not a very good actor here. <laughs> um, and he says, it says, play me. I choo choo choose you. <laughs> um, so Lawrence not only has a nice little cassette, but he has a bullet and a key. And the key doesn't work in his shackle lock. And it doesn't work in Adam's either. Um, Adam can't reach the tape recorder with his body, so Lawrence suggests using his shirt. Okay, first of all, why is he trying to reach <laughs> with his body? He's like 13 feet yeah. from the dead dude. Like, it, you have maybe four feet of chain. Yeah. And he's maybe five foot eight. <laughs> <laughs> Man, he's going to start scatting. Um, the scene before he got his shirt off where he was just trying to reach it, I was like... You can look at that and see that it's impossible for you to reach it. It's not going to work out, bro. <laughs> but yeah. Then Lawrence tells him to take off his shirt. Yeah. Well, well he just wanted to see him. It, it's true. And then he kind of just half-heartedly like, oh, is it half-heartedly? I just had this. No, it's half-heartedly. But it's ha- haphazardly. <laughs> okay. Yeah. These are words. So he half-heartedly and haphazardly. Yeah. Is tosses like, his shirt at the... <laughs> and he doesn't even, like, nod it to where he could, like... Like, loop it through the little hand Yes, hold. or have something. Let's see, where were we? Then he finally gets the, um... Oh, yeah. The drain plug. Yeah, he ties the drain plug to his shirt, which was a really good idea. It was. I wouldn't have thought... I'd See, I'd be screwed in this. Because mm-hmm. I'd just be like, well, this is it, I'm gonna die. Yeah, I would just sit in the corner. And just die. Uh, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> this movie would not work with millennials. Thank God for Gen <laughs> Xers. Because millennials would be like, I always knew it would end like Th- this. This is where it ends. <laughs> so Adam plays his cassette and they, we get a creepy ass voice. And I love Jigsaw's voice. Mm-hmm. It's Tobin it's- Bell's voice is perfect. Yeah. Um, the creepy ass voice tells him you might be in the room that you die in. Uh, the voice describes to at- or describes Adam as a voyeur. Mm hmm. And pretty much paints him as a general piece of shit. Yeah. Uh, He tells him to look in the mirror and says, you can watch yourself die today or you can do something about it. Ooh. So Lawrence and Adam argue about the tape player and Lawrence is like, toss me the tape player. And Adam's like, no, toss me your tape. Yeah. And he's like, no. And he's like, "Uh, I'm not throwing the tape player because what if you break it? Well, and we've already de- developed trust issues. Yes. Like, which I get because you don't know. You don't know him from Adam. Adam. Ooh. <laughs> uh, finally, Lawrence tosses the tape over and we hear every day you break the news to people that they're going to die. Now you will be the cause of death. We find out that Lawrence's goal in the game is to kill Adam. It's not a very good goal. No. Um, he has until six to do it. Uh, the voice says that there's a man in the the man in the middle of the room killed himself due to having a lot of poison in his blood. And then you hear a cough on the tape. Mm-hmm. And the voice tells him there are ways to win this all around you. Remember, X marks the spot for the treasure. It's like the worst escape room ever. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't want to go there. No. I wouldn't pay for that. Mm-mm. Sorry if you hear our dog snoring. <laughs> but it was still also very video gamey at this point, too. Yeah. 
I like it. So if Lawrence doesn't kill Adam by six, his wife and daughter are going to die. And the voice will leave him in this room to rot. Ooh. And then we get the line, let the game begin. It's creepy. Yeah. And I love it. Mm-hmm, I like it. Lawrence has the tape player now. And he listens again with the volume up. And he hears, follow your heart. Kind of whispered, kind of half spoken. Mm-hmm. And at, this, at this point, I got real nervous because, yeah. okay, first of all, why does Lawrence just automatically have all the answers? Yeah. Like, is he in on it? It and, sure seems like it. And I already saw the heart on the toilet. And it looked like the heart was painted on the toilet using poo. With poo. Yeah. And, and now I'm scared. So. <laughs> the, this is one of the worst scenes to me ever. Like, I can, like, blood and guts, that's fine. They do give you a good joke. To break it, though. So, uh, Adam was like, okay, I'm going to dig through the heart toilet. Uh-huh. And instead of going for the tank, he goes for the bowl. Yeah. And the bowl is filled with grossness. Like, it looks like eight factory workers mm-hmm. right after their lunch break just annihilated it. Yeah. So it's while, nasty. While he's digging through it, Lawrence asks him, anything? And he goes, no solids. <laughs> I didn't find that as a joke. <laughs> I liked it. So now he takes the lid off the toilet and he finds a little bindle in there with some hacksaws. Notice that he doesn't try to wash his hand off in the clean tank water. Yeah, he doesn't. He it's... just... No. No. So they find the hacksaws. Adam's a dumbass and immediately tries to saw through his chain with that teeny tiny little hacksaw blade. Yeah, it's not going to happen, bro. Those are thick chains. Mm-hmm. But when Lawrence is distracted after Adam tosses him his saw, we see Adam... Yeah, that was kind of a dick move, too, that he just, like, started sawing and didn't throw one to Lawrence. (laughs) Yeah. But we see that Adam turns around and tosses the bundle bag into the tub. Mm Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, what's he trying to keep out of sight here? Uh, So Adam (laughs) breaks his saw, trying to saw at his chains, and he throws a little bitch fit. Uh, Lawrence keeps trying in a more controlled manner, and then Lawrence gets sad, and he has the realization, he doesn't want us to cut through our chains. He wants us to cut through our feet. How? Methodically. How? No, how is he coming up with this shit? <laughs> well, because they gave him a tiny little hacksaw, and they're chained with great <laughs> This is true, chains. but I, that thought would not come to my mind two minutes after I had a hacksaw. No, probably not. No. We find out here that Lawrence knows who's doing this. He does. And he says it very dramatically. Mm -hmm. The police haven't caught him. I know. Because I was a suspect. See? That's why he's got all the answers. So we get our first Danny Glover flashback time. (laughs) There is a crime scene. And it looked like a guy was crawling his way through some razor wire. And we find out he's been dead for three weeks. Mm. These detectives are walking through that scene with no masks on. Mm -mm. Like, nothing under their noses for the smell. They're just walking through. These are some seasoned vets. Mm -hmm. Uh, Find out the victim is a 46-year-old male who died of massive blood loss from his femoral artery. He cut himself so deeply that there was stomach acid on the floor. Ew. And there is another tape recorder at the scene of this crime. (gasps) Uh, So we find out the victim's name was Paul, who was a perfectly sane, healthy, middle-class male who tried to kill himself with a razor to his wrist last month. The detective saying at this point makes a horrible shocked face. (laughs) (laughs) Like, he he looks like a video game character. Jigsaw asked him if he wanted to die or if he just wanted attention. So Jigsaw... Not very nice. Well, yeah. You're just trying to get attention. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's something you should say to somebody with obvious mental health issues. Yeah. Um, We find out that Paul has to crawl through the razor wire to get to the door that would lock forever at three. It's pretty much a lose-lose situation here. Yeah. So you can either crawl through the razor wire and probably die, or... You can just sit in a corner and die. Yeah. Yeah. He has two hours to crawl through. And I'm sitting there thinking, with two hours, he knows he has two hours. I think he could have come up with a better plan than just run headlong at the razor wire. Like Two hours is quite a bit of time. 
Like, can't you move some of it? That's kind of what I thought, too. Like, try to crawl under it? I mean, I'd, I would lift it of some sort. Yeah. And... I mean, cut your hands up. Yes. But, Not your belly. Yeah, don't dive into the middle of it. <laughs> we see that the body has a jigsaw piece carved out of it. So the papers start calling him the Jigsaw Killer. Uh, Lawrence explains Do you that- think he laid down a, like a puzzle piece? No, I think... He I, just freehanded that? I think so. Okay. I think he's an artiste. Uh, Lawrence explains that Jigsaw isn't a murderer, because he doesn't kill people. He finds ways for people to kill themselves. Hmm. It's actually a good point. It's interesting. Um, now we get, like, another flashback. So it's like, flashback, flashback. Mark, the victim it, in this trap, is a work comp scammer. That's kind of what the feeling I got, too. Um, and Jigsaw has the pictures to prove it. Uh, he explains that Mark has poison in his veins, and he has to open a, a safe to get the antidote. The combination is on the wall, but there's like 300,000 numbers written on the wall. Mm-hmm. Um, the floor is covered in broken glass, and Mark is covered in flammable jizz. He's lubed up with like petroleum Fl- jelly. <laughs> flammable jizz. Yeah. Um, and he has to use a candle to be able to see the combinations while he's covered in flammable yeah. stuff. It's not a, It's not ideal. No. So now he has to program in an analog combination on an old school safe. And that's hard enough. <laughs> but you want him to do it? All lubed up. Yeah. And maybe, the, wh- may, maybe the lube would help because you could put it on the bottom of your feet. And then maybe it wouldn't hurt as much. Maybe. I'd like scrape it off my arms and put it on my feet. Yeah. That's not a bad idea. You'd survive longer than me. <laughs> <laughs> so the female detective, I, I don't, do we ever hear her name? I don't know. I didn't catch it. I didn't either. Um, the female detective says that Jigsaw was looking through a porky style peephole at the victim, but they found a pen light. Uh-oh. So they're going to get a print off that pen light. Mm-hmm. And now we cut to Lawrence Gordon being callous doctor man. He explains that the patient that they're looking at, he has a whole bunch of uh, interns with him Mm -hmm. uh, doing rounds. And he says that the patient they're looking at has a brain tumor that metastasized from his colon. So does that make him a real shit for brains? No. (laughs) No. That was my joke. Yeah. I made that joke. Notice how I didn't laugh. Yeah. Because it was a dad joke. Nobody ever does. A creepy orderly steps in and says that the patient's name is John. And he's an interesting person. Mm-hmm. And the orderly is Michael Emerson, who my mom knows. Mm-hmm. And Dr. <laughs> Gordon is making googly eyes at one of the interns. Mm-hmm. And she's making them back. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we find out the orderly's name is Zepp. Like, is that his first name or his last name? I, I'm not sure. Maybe that's just what they call him. Like Good maybe, old Zepp. Maybe he's a big Led Zeppelin fan. Maybe. Maybe he was on a Zeppelin and he survived. Oh, could be. I throat farted. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, Lawrence gets paged. He has to go talk to some cops. And the cops are just like touching everything in his office. I know. What? And like Danny Glover standing behind his desk, like fondling his uh, diploma. I think they're trying to be intimidating. Yeah. Uh, But we know right away that Dr. Gordon's good at his job. He makes a lot of money because he has one of those shirts with the like, it's a blue shirt. (laughs) With the fancy white collar and cuffs. I thought that too, yes. <laughs> and like in the late 90s, early 2000s, you had one of those shirts. You were making it. Mm-hmm. The cops are like, hey, we want to take you downtown because we found your pen light. And what was your pen light doing at the scene of a crime? Where were you last night? But he can't tell where he was last night. Yeah, he's like, I'm not going to tell you. So they take him downtown. And he gets a lawyer, and the lawyer asks him what he was doing last night. And Lauren's like, okay, so I was fucking around with my wife last night. Uh, so he gives the cop his alibi. We find out that this happened five months ago. And he said uh, that Jigsaw tried to set him up for murder. And he's a really horrible actor. Yeah. And he keeps brushing his hair back. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't understand it. I didn't either. Uh, we find out his alibi checks out. Uh, for some reason, the cops have him stick around to listen to a survivor's testimony, which I, 
They say testimony, and it's not a testimony. It's a statement. Yeah, it's a statement. I think they did this because they were still suspicious of him, and they Uh, were trying to get a reaction out of him. Yeah. So the survivor is Amanda, and her mouth- Hey, that's my name. It is. It's not. Your name's Mandy. I know, but legally, my name's Amanda. I know. It weirds me out. Uh, Her mouth looks sad. It does. I wrote that her mouth looks sad. It looks sad. So we find out that she had woken up strapped to a chair with a torture device on her head. And she gets a video. She doesn't get an audio tape. She gets a video. I know. Because Amanda's special. And in the video, Billy the puppet is super creepy. Mm Mm-hmm. And... We hear the Jigsaw voice, and he says, she doesn't know him, but he knows her. That's actually how I used to ask girls out, I think. Like, hey, you don't know me, but I know your routine. No? Your your jokes are falling flat. Yeah. (laughs) I'll stop with the jokes. Uh, Maybe I need to start planning jokes and writing them in the notes. No. Uh, So the device she's wearing on her head is hooked up to her upper and lower jaws. When the timer on the back goes off, her mouth will be permanently ripped open. Think of it as a reverse bear trap. Pretty much. And we get a little video demonstration that shows it exploding a styrofoam head. And then Amanda's eyes get real big. Was it a styrofoam head? Because I thought it was a watermelon. I thought it was a styrofoam head. Oh. You know, like what you put like wigs on when you're not (laughs) using them. I couldn't really see what it was. I just saw something explode and it was dark. So I thought it was a watermelon because I (laughs) felt like it would be more visually like comparable. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, So we find out the key to the device she's wearing is in the stomach of her dead cellmate, who is a male. Why is her cellmate a male? What prison... Was she in? Oh, never mind. Sorry. <laughs> Cellmate. He put them in a cell together. If you could see my face right now. <laughs> so uh, I'm the dumb one. I'm looking at Cam like, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, yeah, so we're, we're... Did you actually write that in your notes? Yeah. <laughs> I thought they did like hard time together. And I was like, what kind of prison puts the men and the women together? That's a bad idea. Yeah. Yeah. There'd be more than a key in a belly. Yeah. yeah. There's, no. Um, so we get like a nine inch nails music video spinning scene of mm-hmm. Amanda getting out of the chair. And as soon as she gets out of the chair, the timer starts and her eyes get really big again. Well, she- I s- this is an easy way for them to make something look super scary for super cheap. Yeah. Because it's just lots of quick shots. And the camera kind of spins back mm-hmm. and forth around her. So she starts fumbling around with the device like, hey, I'm going to get this thing off me. And that doesn't work. Mm -mm. Then she tells the cops in the little flashback scene that she saw the body. Um, And do do you think that she somewhat resembles Alanis Morissette? No. Oh. I thought she did. Okay. (laughs) Um, I just wrote in notes, she looks like Alanis. (laughs) See, I put the keys in the stomach of the roommate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I, I go through more things here. <laughs> I was like, how is that her cellmate? What kind of prison was this? Like, which prison? <laughs> you went off on a whole tangent? I did. Okay. Um, so she finds a scalpel. And we were assured that the cellmate was dead. He's not. Mm-mm. He opens his eyes. I don't think he says he's dead, does he? I, th- I thought he said in the think, stomach of your dead cellmate. I think he just says. Oh, of your cellmate? Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought he said dead I cellmate. I don't think he says dead. Um, he looks dead. Yeah. I bet he wishes he was dead. Yeah. So she hacks him up and gets the key. And we find out that the cellmate was, was not dead. No, he was just all whacked up with opiates. <laughs> also, I-, I wonder why Detective Singh was like, oh, yeah, by the way, the guy wasn't dead. He was just doped out on opiates. Like, what? why are you telling him this stuff? Yeah, I don't know. There was lots of squishy noises. Yeah, and she's pulling stuff out. Yeah. Which looked really gross. Mm-hmm. Yes, so, they like show her like almost like holding this, what's supposed to be the stomach, I assume. Yeah. And like putting it, her hands in it. With dripping sauce. And I saw that she was actually using pig, and, pig uteruses. Ugh. That couldn't have smelled good. Mm-mm. Uh, so she gets the device off. Just in time, because it snaps open right when it hits the floor. Mm-hmm. 
And then Billy comes riding in on his trike and he's like, congratulations, you're still alive. Like, it's kind of like a Dwight birthday greeting. You are alive. How does the Billy puppet work? I think probably radio control. Okay. Because if Jigsaw likes to be at the at the scene. Yeah, I guess then he'd be nearby. And then Billy the puppet in the Jigsaw voice tells her that most people are so ungrateful to be alive, but not you. Not anymore. Kind of like Tyler Durden says to Raymond K. Hessel. Mm. Which, another David Fincher tie-in. Yep. Now Danny Glover kind of shames Amanda for being a drug addict. Yeah. And he's like, are you grateful, Mandy? And she's like, he, uh, he helped me. So we kind of get the feeling she's got like Stockholm Syndrome, even though she never met yeah. the person. She's definitely in need of mental health. Yeah. We can see the track marks on her arms. And then the scene fades back into the shitty room via the ceiling swipe. Yeah. That was pretty cheesy. Uh, I think they were trying to pay some homage to George Lucas with the scene swipes. Oh, but we just got the like flip. Yeah. They tried. That's all right. It, it worked. Um, so Adam suspects Lawrence is not on the up and up here. And uh, he's threatening to cut him with a piece of broken mirror that's on the floor. Mm-hmm. And uh, he notices something about the mirror pieces. It's a two-way mirror. So uh, Adam breaks the mirror even more by throwing like me. <laughs> he, he's, he's not a very good thrower. No, and neither am I. So <laughs> uh, now we find out that there's a camera behind the mirror and we see what the camera's going to. And it's a video monitor with a gloved hand, much like an Inspector Gadget. Oh, Dr. Claw. Good callback. <laughs> The gloved hand waves at the screen, so oh, yes. you feel like it's Jigsaw watching them. And it kind of sings songs like, I can see mm-hmm. you. Adam says, so what is this, reality TV? And I gotta say, I would watch this show over most reality shows. Well, and he also <laughs> says it's the most fun he's had without lubricant. Yes. <laughs> um, then he starts just throwing stuff at the camera, and he's still throwing badly. Mm-hmm. Apparently, Australians don't play baseball. They don't? I guess not. Hmm. They're too busy running for their lives from deadly creatures. Yeah. Wait, Australian or New Zealand? Both. No. Like, is Lee Winnell Australian or... Oh, I have no idea. Uh, I know he has that type of accent. <laughs> They're different accents. Well, they both have kind of the twangy sing song. Oh, Lawrence tells him that Jigsaw has already thought of every angle. Oh, okay. Yeah, Which is I, weird because it's like, how do you know that? Well, I wrote in my notes, pre-thought comment from Dr. Lawrence. And I was like, what does that mean? So I need to do a better job of note taking. Apparently. <laughs> so now we get a speech from Lawrence about fighting disease and seeing it as a perfect engine. And that's what they have to look at this trap like. Mm-hmm. They have to see it down to the molecule. So the tape told him to find an X. So he's like, we need to find that X. Lawrence is still very chill. Yeah. Considering his family's like on the chopping block. Mm -hmm. I think I'd be a little more worked up. He's calm. Lawrence has a flashback now to uh, his daughter having a nightmare about a man in her room. What kid sleeps like that? I don't know. She's like, she looks like she's in a coffin. She looks dead. Yeah. No child just lays flat on their back with their arms crossed. (laughs) No. She's like, mom. The man talked to me. It wasn't a nightmare. He talked to me. And the mom's like, hey, I'll go check your room. But no, she wants dad. First, can we discuss the bedroom of the parents? It's very red, isn't it? It's burgundy velvet bed. And it's very vampire looking. Velvety? But can you? Yes, it's like velvety. And that's what I'm like. Can you imagine sleeping in that? I I get hot the way it is. I would just be a sweat cocoon. Yeah. It looks like it's like velour or Ugh. velvet. That's gross. And they're rich people, so you know that like the inside of that apartment's like 79 degrees yeah. at all times. And then they wear clothes to bed. Yeah. That's gross. Rich people are stupid. They are. Um, so the mom says to Dr. Gordon, she's like, your daughter had a bad dream again. Yeah. And she's just like instantly venomous. 
I just refer to her as the bitch. Yeah, she's very bitchy. She's not nice. I have to say, though, Monica Potter does an excellent job. Oh, I love Monica Potter. So the wife asks him to go talk to her, but he's busy just finishing up typing one sentence. He's like, hey, just let me finish this real quick and then I'll be right there. They do kind of try to lead up to the like lead up to him not going because work's more important. Like, I think that's the vibe they wanted you to get. And then it was like, surprise, he's not really a dick. Oh, okay. And I, I just wrote here, why are spouses of successful people in movies always assholes? They're like... Because they're sad and neglected. And they're like... Like when you see movies with firefighters or cops, and like their wife's always like, I just wish you'd spend more time with me than fighting fires. Like, okay. That's my job. <laughs> That's what pays for the house you're living in, bitch. Uh, so... Lawrence stops typing, and he goes and checks the room, determines that his daughter is safe, and then he <sighs> calls her feet tootsies. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then he... He, he does... There's a very uncomfortable scene of him playing with his daughter's foot. Uh-huh. And there is no chemistry between these actors. No, she is looking at him she like looks... he is a complete stranger. Yes. Like, why are you touching my fucking foot? It feels like a child predator moment. Yeah. It doesn't look good. It's... I'm glad you saw that too. Okay, because it's it, it was th- there was just no chemistry between them. It was uncomfortable. No, and she is like legitimately looking at him like, "Why are you touching my yes. foot right now?" Don't touch my tootsies. Um, but uh oh, his pager goes off. He has to go be a doctor. Oh man! And then his daughter sucks at acting, and she's like, "Are you gonna leave us?" And he's like, "No." Lawrence and his wife argue about him pretending that he's happy. And he's like, no, really, I am happy. Mm-hmm. And she's like, just yell at me or something. Yeah. I think, I think she wants a divorce so she can get half. <laughs> There's no prenup there. Um, so we're back in the shitty room again. Uh, Lawrence tosses his wallet to Adam, which is kind of a weird move. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh. Adam sees pictures of the daughter, and Lawrence explains that there's another picture behind the one he's looking at. How did he know what picture he was looking at? I don't know. Um, and he loves that all of them are in this one. Th- this... Yep. <laughs> he gives a super dramatic line about how someone always has to be behind the camera, and it's usually him, so he always is missing from photos. Like, bro, you want a bunch of pictures of yourself? <laughs> bro, take a selfie. Yeah. So Adam, instead of finding the picture that he likes so much that he hides it behind another picture, yeah, um, he finds a Polaroid of Dr. Lawrence's wife and daughter bound up, and it reads, Regards, with a jigsaw piece. Flips it over, and the back of the picture says, X marks the spot. Sometimes you see better with your eyes shut. Which is a lie. You can't see shit with your eyes shut. But it's a clue. It is. It's kind of sweet what Adam does here. I don't know if it was sweet or if it was him trying to get ahead in the game, but he doesn't show the Polaroid yes. to Lawrence. Yeah. He uh, he just like, you know what? We're just going to not show it's, this. It's like, what are what were his intentions? Was mm-hmm. it good? Because yeah, I don't really get the feeling that Adam cares about being a good person at this point. No. He's like, I want a cigarette and I want to get out of this room. Yeah. Um, so now we get another flashback. But it's to the same scene. Mm-hmm. Um, the wife's like, hey, just admit that you're unhappy. Lawrence is like, nah, I'm good. And he just seems to like not process the situation at all, which is like, kind of why I was like, is he on the spectrum? Because <laughs> like, she's really trying to start a fight with him. And he's yeah. like, nah. Well, she's just trying to get some emotion from him. Yeah. And, and he's like, I don't have that. Mm-hmm. Um, we go back to the daughter in bed. And her closet door opens. Oh, yes. And it's super creepy. Mm -hmm. This scene just gives me the the oogies. Yeah. So we see just a creepy eye from inside the closet. And we hear a, good night, little girl. And that's creepy. I would be dead. Yeah. And then the closet just like explodes open. And the daughter starts screaming. Uh, The daughter's name is Diana. Who names their child Diana? And Is this 1971? Because it was acceptable then. Yeah. So the mom hears the scream, goes run into the room, turns on the light, and we see a blanket monster grabbing Diana. I don't know why, but that is like the creepiest thing ever. Yes. Just a man draped in a blanket. And it's like the opposite. Like they're they're turning the lights on so you should feel safe. And it makes it worse. And then you see the scary man in the blanket. But props to the mom. She charges at that blanket monster. She does. 
Now the blanket monster is out of the blanket, and he's dressed in black, and he has some nice gloves on, and we've seen those gloves before. Mm-hmm. Um, he has a gun and a stethoscope and a bunny, and the daughter still sucks at acting. Mm-hmm. The mom has really badly dyed hair, mm-hmm. and the blanket monster is listening to their hearts all creepy-like. This, and yeah. Then he pulls the gun and listens to the little girl's heart again. Then he threatens the mom with the gun, like holding the gun to her head. While listening to the daughter's heart. Do you feel like he was trying to sense whether she felt her life was more important than her mother's? I don't know. He's just being a creep ass. That was the feeling I got. Like, oh, is it scary for you to die? Is it scary for mama to die? Yeah. It's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But then he gives her a little stuffed bunny and is like, there, just be happy. Yeah. So now the blanket monster peeks out the window and we see that the blanket monster is orderly Zepp. Hi, Zepp. We cut across the street, and we find out Danny Glover is across the street from the Gordon's apartment with a camera pointed directly at Lawrence's room. Mm -hmm. Danny Glover has a lot of takeout containers and coffee cups Mm -hmm. and case stuff on his walls. He's in an apartment or hotel or a crack house. I I think it's a crack house. Um, I'm not sure. At least a former crack house. And then it's obvious he's become obsessed with Lauren. And there's old food containers everywhere. There's old newspapers everywhere. Yes. And composition notebooks. Yeah. So you know he's psycho. You know he's psycho. Um, Kind of a nod back to David Fincher and Seven. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Many a manifesto have been written in composition notebooks. <laughs> it's very true. It's true. If you see a black composition notebook, you're like, uh, what's in there? So Danny Glover's looking out the window, and we're just going to refer to him as Danny Glover. Because he's Danny Glover. He's not Detective Tap. No. He's Danny Glover. He's Danny. You put some respect on his name. So we're looking at all the case stuff on the walls, and you, you just really know he's lost it. hmm And he's looking across the street, and he's like, I shouldn't have let you go. <laughs> like, well, he had an alibi. Yeah. <laughs> and we get a quick flashes. Of all the, the case stuff on Danny Glover's wall. Mm-hmm. And then we get actually a really cool sweep scene. Yes. Like it was the car pulling uh-huh. up. I really liked that. I, I thought that was really cool. It- like the scene swipe is is the car pulling up. Mm-hmm. I liked it. So now we're in a different flashback. It was when Danny Glover was dropping off Dr. Gordon. Now all of a sudden, Carrie Ewells sucks at acting. Mm-hmm. Again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, which is he's a good actor yeah i don't understand why he sucked at acting so I, much i don't here. know but he tells him you know i'm sorry i couldn't help when that was quite an amazing story that poor woman told mm-hmm. like all right uh so danny glover says that they arrested a dentist that liked to play with little kids too much and he lived two blocks away from here and then i love this line the sewer runs under this neighborhood too like, we all got dirty secrets? Yep. Oh. Uh, so Lawrence nods like, yeah, I get it. I'm going to leave now. <laughs> <laughs> I still didn't do it, bro. We go back to the police station and Danny Glover is obsessing over the Billy the Puppet video. Uh, Sing comes in and invites Danny Glover to go out for beers. You can tell Sing's trying to like, like come on. Make, a, make light of things. Yeah. And try to get him off of this. Yeah, he even tells him he needs a girlfriend at yeah. one point, doesn't he? Yes. Sing's not a great actor. No. But he's very likable. Mm -hmm. I like him. Danny Glover calls Sing back just as he's left the room and is like, hey, look at this. There's gang graffiti. So they're talking about it. And that gang's territory was only about four blocks. Mm -hmm. So they turn up the volume on the video. They hear a fire alarm. I didn't hear a fire alarm. I just heard a lot of static. Oh, I heard a very faint fire alarm. Okay. So we get a collage of pictures showing a building outside. They're like, hey. We know where this is at because we checked the records. We know where there were fire alarms and we know where that gang's territory was. Mm -hmm. So they pull up to an old mannequin factory. Because that's creepy. Yeah, that's not where I want to go. Danny Glover's a badass. He doesn't need a warrant. Mm -mm. Danny don't give a fuck. No, he's. But they're going to go after dark. Yes. So that they'll have the cover of darkness. Which seems really good when you're dealing with a potential serial killer. But so will everyone else. Yeah. Ooh. (laughs) So Singh and Danny Glover go into the mannequin factory. They break in. And it's foggy. 
And, uh, well, yeah, because they're in a city. Oh. <laughs> it's always it's always foggy and in cities. Foggy, smoky, I'm not sure what it was. Yeah. And Danny Glover looks like he's never held a gun in his life. No. Which and, I know he has. And, and Singh is swinging that shotgun <laughs> yes. so wildly. It's just back and forth. Because, like, Danny Glover made a career out of playing cops. How yeah. do you How do you act like you've never <laughs> held a gun? Um, Singh also loves his gum. He is chomping oh, away yeah. at that gum. Uh, so we see that there are some cages, and there's low-hanging lights, and they find, like, a diorama of a room, and, hey, we know that room. Mm-hmm. That's the room that Adam and Lawrence are in. Uh, it's hiding under some velvet. Mm-hmm. Red velvet. Yeah. Just like the bed. Uh, they find Billy the puppet. Uh, they find the pig mask, which is going to come into play later. The pig mask is creepy. I don't like the pig face. No. Then something under another little velvet blanket starts moving. Mm-hmm. So they pull it off and there's a man and he's tied to a chair, affixed to a chair. Yeah. And he has duct tape over his mouth and he sucks at acting. Mm-hmm. Um, the elevator starts coming up, and Danny Glover's like, hey, let's see what the killer does. And he puts the duct tape back on the guy's mouth instead of busting the killer. <laughs> um, <laughs> this was an interesting move. Yeah. Um, Singh doesn't like it. I'm not sure why they didn't just take him down. Yeah. So they cover the duct tape man back up, and uh, they cover the desk back up with the velvet. And the killer is in, like, theatrical robes, and he's moving all slowly. Mm-hmm. And he looks creepy. Yeah, he looks very creepy. Uh, the duct tape man's whining and crying under his velvet um, while the detectives look on from the shadows. Uh, the killer talks to the duct tape man, whose name is Jeff. Ooh, I didn't catch that. And he's like, hey, I need more powerful tranquilizers next time. And then he assures him, I've given your life a purpose. You're a test subject for something much greater than yourself. And at this point, the detectives are just like, Surprise! Now's the time! <laughs> and they jump out. They're like, let's see what he does here. He's talking to him. Let's jump out. And I don't understand the motivation. No. Well, the killer sees him, and he steps on a little foot pedal, which starts a trap. There are drills that are going to kill Jeff within 20 seconds. Uh, Danny Glover orders Singh to stop the machine. Singh throws his shotgun to Danny Glover. Why not just shoot the bad guy? And then stop the machine. Yeah. They, they're <laughs> supposed to capture, not shoot. Still shoot him. Okay. <laughs> uh, so we find out one key will unlock the machine. And, and there's the key like is in a box. Okay, there's a lot of keys. There's a lot of keys. A lot of keys. Yeah. Should have kept that shotgun and just shot the bad guy. Um, or shoot the trap. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, shoot the killer, shoot the trap. That's what I would have done. Uh, but Singh gets in the box and he finds a whole bunch of keys and he's fumbling with them and Danny Glover still doesn't shoot the killer. <laughs> Danny Glover gets the killer on the floor and calls him a sick bastard and the killer's like, yeah, I'm sick from a disease eating away at me inside. Sick of people who don't appreciate their blessings. Sick of those who scoff at the suffering of others. And Singh gets smart and finally shoots the trap. Mm-hmm. Which should have done that right away. I, um, I don't think it would have been my first instinct. But watch out, Jigsaw has a knife arm. Oh, no. And he uses it to slit Danny Glover's throat. Uh, Singh turns into a stormtrooper and can't hit anything while shooting. (laughs) Uh, Then Singh goes into the steamy tunnel chase. No. no. Is it protocol for him to just leave Danny there bleeding? Does he have a radio? Can he radio in and be like... like, I know they're not supposed to be there, so... I, I think Danny Glover would have been like, screw me, get the killer. Yeah. Um, but shouldn't he like at least call for help or something? Maybe. I, I would I would probably try to radio. Yeah. So Danny Glover's dying, so he decides to stick his tongue out a lot. <laughs> um, the music here is very Nine Inch Nails. Mm-hmm. Then Singh shoots the killer in the back with a shotgun. And, and he falls down. He goes down. Um, Danny Glover's clump clambering not clumbering clambering down the stairs uh i thought you were gonna try to say clumsily oh <laughs> no uh maybe i was gonna say clumsily clambering Ooh. but now Singh accidentally trips a tripwire and gets his head blown off by a shotgun five 
Yeah, a bunch of shotguns. Five shotguns. What's the matter, Jet? Did you meet your mama? Our dog's very needy. Um. So yeah, rest in peace, Sing. I liked you. Mm-hmm. Then Jigsaw gets up. Yeah, Danny Glover reaches for his dead partner, partner dramatically, while pictures of his blown off head flash on the screen mm-hmm. real quick. It's gross. It's gross. And now we cut back to modern day Danny Glover with his throat slit scar. And he's like, I had you on your knees. <laughs> he's talking to himself. He's talking to Sing. And then he loses his mind and he's like, Sing, we're going to close this case. <laughs> we're like, okay, Danny, calm down. Um, now we go back to Zepp and he's sitting at the computer. It's 352 on this large digital clock. And now we're back in the shitty room again. I don't want to be here. No, it's bad. Lawrence wants to find the ex. He sees Adam fumbling with something in the tub and was like, hey, what's going on over there? Then they start to bicker. And uh, he's like, don't keep me in the dark about what you're thinking. And then Adam's like, whoa, keep me in the dark. Dark. And he was like, turn the lights off. And Lawrence is like, what? Why? And he's like, just do it. So he turns the lights off and we see a big painted X on the wall Mm -hmm. in glow in the dark paint. Yeah. Um. Lawrence smashes the wall with the saw butt, and he finds a box. He very ceremoniously puts the box on the ground. Uh, The box is locked, but Lawrence's package key opens it. Ooh. Jet, quiet down. Um, So we see inside the box is a cell phone and some cigarettes and a A lighter. lighter. And a note says, the cigarettes are harmless, I promise. Smoking is only poisonous when it ends in bloodshed. Think about this. You don't need a gun to kill Adam. Hmm. Hmm. And Adam is willing to die for cigarettes. And Mm -hmm. I feel that. (laughs) He's like, cell phone, greatest invention ever. And then he sees the cigarettes and he's like, nope. Don't care. (laughs) That's the greatest invention ever. I don't care about the cell phone. Just give me that nicotine. So we find out the cell phone can't call out, and then this triggers something, and Lawrence remembers last night. He was walking through a parking garage, kind of felt like someone was there, wipes his eyes just in time for a camera to flash, and he's like, whoa, what was that? Um, So he gets out of his BMW to call for help when the gate won't open, and somebody comes out of his back seat. It's creepy. It's creepy. He should have checked the back seat. Well, he should have checked the back seat, of course, but it's all shot through, like, the garage mirror. Yeah. And so you're seeing it kind of warped. Mm-hmm. Very effective scene. Mm-hmm. And then you see the creepy pig person come out of the car. Yeah. He pulls out his cell phone. His phone's just giving him the no signal beepy. And then the robed figure is like crawling on the ground. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's very off-putting. It's unnerving. It's one of those like, if I watched that and then like paused it to go to let the dog out, mm-hmm. I'd be like, oh no, it's out here, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> You'd be on high alert outside. Um, the figure stands up. It's wearing the pig mask. And then we get quick cuts and it looks like the pig mask person slit his throat. But we know that it didn't. I thought it just he just attacked him. Um, so now we cut back to the shitty room. And Lawrence remembers that it was waiting for him. And he questions Adam about turning off the lights. He's like, you know what? You're a terrible liar. Mm-hmm. What else aren't you telling me? And Adam goes into full passive aggressive mode and goes on a diatribe about his life. Like his sixth birthday party, his friend stabbed him with a nail. <laughs> no, a rusty nail. A rusty nail. A rusty nail. Um, his last girlfriend was a feminist vegan punk who broke up with him because she thought he was too angry. She sounds fun. Yeah, I like her. So then Adam reveals the photo. He's all pissed off and he's like, hey, you want to know what? Look at this. And he tosses him the photo of his wife and his daughter bound. And then <laughs> and then, uh, Dr. Gordon can't act again all of mm-hmm. a sudden. He's like, wah, wah, why did you get this? <laughs> so then Lawrence stands up and he yells at the camera. Then he thinks up the poison cigarette scheme. See, I was confused by this because initially when they said that When there's that much poison in your blood, the only thing left to do is shoot yourself. I was assuming like that person had cancer. Oh, I I don't know why I jumped to that conclusion. So then when he like started doing the blood stuff, I was like, cancer is like not contagious, dude. 
<laughs> you can't just give that to someone. No. So Lawrence figures out this whole poison smoke scheme. Uh, he's starting to look a lot like the little girl in Night of the Living Dead here. Mm -hmm. Just like all of a sudden he has a whole bunch of eye makeup on. Because mm -hmm. he's sad. He's sad. And, he's uh, breaking down. Adam is kind of holding his head in his hands and Lawrence is like, oh, I'm going to dip this cigarette in the poison blood. And he makes sure that the video camera sees what he's doing. Mm -hmm. uh, he looks over at the camera and then he's like, hey, guess what? I'm going to do it. And then he whispers the plan to Adam. They shut the lights off so they can't see them. Yes. And, and he whispers. He whispers the plan and he's like, hey, play along with me on this. Uh, Zep can't hear it. So he turns up the volume and all he can hear is staticky stuff. And then Lawrence turns the lights back on and they very poorly act out this little scene. <laughs> like, so, buddy, you still want that smoke? Yeah. And then Adam's like, heck yeah, I want that cigarette. Give it to me, buddy. So he tosses him the cigarette. He tosses him the lighter. But it's not the cigarette dipped in blood. Nope. He swapped it out for the clean one. Well, if you handed me a cigarette dipped in blood... I don't think I'd smoke it. Uh, how many hours has it been since my last <laughs> cigarette? Because I think I might. So Adam lights it and he pretends to be poisoned in like funny, crappy cartoon ways. Mm -hmm. He staggers around and moans and then he, uh, finger quotes, dies. Yeah. And Lawrence says, there, I've done it. <laughs> and then Adam gets zapped just out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Like we hear the electricity and he's. Kind of convulsing on the ground. Flailing around. And Lawrence is pissed. He's like, what the fuck, dude? Lawrence thinks he's faking it. Yeah, he's like, you didn't get electrocuted, you dumbass. <laughs> and so Lawrence is like, you know what? Screw this. I'm, I'm going to try the saw again because I'm mad. And now Adam starts remembering everything from last night. Uh, he remembers how he got here. He went home. He was listening to some shitty music on his Walkman. He has a huge apartment. Mm-hmm. Like, I get the impression that he doesn't have a lot of money. Yeah. But he has a big apartment. Well, and he has his own um, dark room. Dark room. Yeah. So he's developing pictures in his dark room, and we see that they are pictures of Lawrence. Oh, no. Uh, Adam passes out and wakes up in his dark, dark room. Mm hmm And his flashlight doesn't work, and he's like, I think there's someone in my apartment. So he does something I wouldn't have thought of, and he picks up his camera, and he's like, I can use the flash. On my camera, like a flashlight. I would have thought of this, but not have done it, because it is the creepiest thing ever. <laughs> and if you've ever had a flash go off in a dark room, you know that it doesn't help you see. No, it just blinds you. It just you. blinds you. Um, so he's flashing it around the apartment. I actually really like this scene, because I feel like, I don't want to sound all pretentious, but I feel like you get really thrown into the scene with the character. Mm-hmm. Because, like, you can't see anything. Well, after you can't... I mean, you can kind of see a little bit. Yeah. Um, but... I'm, I'm pretty sure I've been to this apartment. Oh, yeah? Like, yeah. It's very, very, like, early aughts, young male decor. There's, like, street signs hanging up and posters and... I've lived in that apartment. Yes. <laughs> okay, so he, he walks around. He's flashing the... Flashing the... Flash. flash. <laughs> uh... And then he hears Billy laughing, and he turns, and Billy's sitting in the recliner, Billy the puppet. And he hits Billy with a baseball bat, and he's like, who's there? Who's there? Now he has his camera and his bat, and we get a flash, and it reveals the pig face. Ooh, he opens a closet. Yes. There's a pig face. And the flashback's over now, and we're back in the shitty room. I don't like the scary pig face. I don't either. I kind of want it to be my Halloween costume. Ooh, that's a good Halloween costume. So it's 23 minutes away from the six o'clock deadline and the cell phone rings and Lawrence answers it. He hears Diana and Diana cries. I'm scared, daddy. The bad man from my room is here and he has us tied up and he has a gun. And Lawrence is shaken, but still very stoic. Mm -hmm. And then Zeb pushes his wife's hair away with a knife. It's creepy. <laughs> I don't like it. Um. And his wife starts talking to him. She calls him Larry, and I can't handle it. Well, it, it, Carrie Yule's acting just drops dramatically here, yes. too. Because he can't say Allie in an American <laughs> accent. Allie! <laughs> yeah, she keeps calling him Larry. We find out, finally, his wife's name is Allie. And she asks if Adam is there. And How does she know Adam's there? And he's like, what the fuck? How do you know Adam? 
And she's like, hey, don't believe his lies. He knows you. He knew all about you before today. Ooh. Now Adam seems suspicious. Yes. Lawrence is yelling at the camera all dramatically, and he collapses to the floor. And Adam's like, hey, you okay there, bud? And then Larry tells Adam he shouldn't believe him. And he reveals that, hey, you know me. Mm -hmm. And Adam's like, okay, I'm a private eye photographer. And you know what? I saw you cheating on your wife. And Lawrence is like, no, you didn't, because I didn't do that. But I have photos. And then Adam's like, oh, and he calls him Larry. Oh, I didn't notice that. Yeah, Adam calls him Larry. Hmm. Which is weird, because his wife just called him Larry, yeah. and that was the first time we'd heard that. Mm -hmm. I just thought that was kind of well, weird. Well, and it's not like they were far away, so it wasn't like you probably heard the conversa conversation. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't understand it, and I was like, oh, maybe he does know something. Mm -hmm. So Adam reveals that he took... The eye wipe photo in the parking garage <laughs> when he's like, yeah, you thought there was somebody there. There was somebody there. I was there. <laughs> it was me. And uh, Adam hides behind posts like a champion. He's like, look at me. You can't see me. He's sneaky. Um, and he can prove that Larry didn't go anywhere near the hospital last night. Mm -hmm. So he pulls photos out of the bundle and tosses them to him. And he's like, yeah, I've been taking pictures of you for a few days now. And we find out that Adam gets money for taking pictures of rich cheaters. So it kind of sounds like his wife was like, I need some photo evidence yeah. so I can leave this dude. I told you. Prenup. Mm-hmm. She's a smart woman. Then he's like, Larry, why are you going to that shit hotel if you weren't banging someone? Uh, and Adam says his camera doesn't know how to lie. That's so dramatic. Yeah, that was very dramatic. It was a wow. And so now we get another flashback and it cuts away to Lawrence and his mistress the page that he got while he was at home was from the mistress. And he, <laughs> once again, making me think he's on the spectrum. He's like, I gave you a precise time uh -huh. at which to page me. <laughs> like, why did you not follow the rules? Exactly. Lawrence is starting to feel bad at, about things. And he's like, you know what? Let's not do this anymore. I'm, I'm breaking things off. And then the phone rings and his mistress answers. And he looks at her like, seriously? Well, first of all, they sit down on the bed together, and she just immediately starts trying to take her shirt off. Yeah, and he's like, no, no. No. He's like, I'm breaking up with you. Yeah, but then the phone rings, and they decide to answer the phone. Yeah. So she's like, oh, yeah, he's right here. And he just tosses him the phone. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, like, it's no big deal. Yep. So Larry talks to the caller, who is Zep. Mm-hmm. And Zep's like, I know what you're doing, doctor. And then he hangs up. And Lawrence leaves, and we're back in the parking garage scene again. So he asks Adam, like, hey, who paid you? And he's like, this guy named Bob. He paid me up front 200 bucks a night. And Adam didn't know Lawrence at all, and he didn't see what happened to him after he took the pictures. So Lawrence figures out that somebody set this all up, mm -hmm. and it was whoever put them in this room. And Adam says... Uh, the payer is a tall black guy with a scar around his neck. Who's that? It's Danny. It is. Um, we find out that uh, Danny Glover had been discharged from the police force after he became obsessed. Mm -hmm. He's not a <laughs> cop anymore. No. And Larry's bitching and whining about his privacy. Like, how could you violate my privacy by taking photos of me? He's and He's starting to slowly lose his cool. Yeah. And Adam kind of defends himself. He's like, what are you more pissed about? The fact that I took pics of you or the fact that I took pictures of you cheating on your wife? Mm -hmm. And Lawrence gets pissed. And he's like, I don't care if you covered yourself in peanut butter and had a 15 hooker gangbang. <laughs> Which I like, Adam. It's pretty dramatic. Yeah. Um, Lawrence calms down and then very badly collapses to the floor. And he, <laughs> I had everything in order. Yeah. And he lays down and he grabs the photo of his his ladies bound up. Now we cut back to his apartment where Allie's gag gets removed. And Allie and Diana have a bonding moment. Aww. Allie's working at her ties. And now we're back in the shitty room. And Adam gets an idea about photos on the floor. He's like, hey, look at that. There's Zep. And he shows the picture to Larry. And Larry's like, uh, I've never seen this photo before. And he flips it around. And he's like, that's Zep. He knows him. Yeah. And now Zep's dumbfounded. He's He's been caught. He's not happy. And he's uh, 
I'm going to take great pleasure in seeing you pay for this. Mm-hmm. He's yelling about it. And now we think Zep is Jigsaw. Yeah. And I think it's funny because he's like, I'm going to take great, great pleasure in seeing you pay for this. You're chained to a pipe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, okay. So Adam notices uh, that it's six o'clock and he, we're out of time. Oh, no. So Zep sees the clock turn to six and he's like, cool, it's action time. Um, but Allie is free. And she's freed Diana, but she's like, hey, let's put these gags back on, pretend to be bound. Zep comes into the room, and he's very confused looking. Mm Mm-hmm. And he's like, Dr. Gordon's time is up. Now I gotta do what I gotta do. Yeah, he's he's creepy here. Yeah. Uh, So the cell phone rings, and Allie is on the phone, and she's like, you failed. And And then... And then she attacks him. Yeah. She attacks Zep. She gets the gun. Lawrence is still on the phone. I feel bad for Larry here. Yes. Because like all he can do is hear. Yeah. And it doesn't sound good. He's hearing struggling and shooting and yelling. And yeah, it it sounds like his wife is getting murdered. Mm -hmm. Danny sees flashes. Oh, yeah. Through the apartment window. And then he kind of, he's like, well, time for action. And he loads his gun. Mm -hmm. Well, Zep can't handle Allie because she's like, she's like a mama bear right now. Yeah. Like, she's going off. She's fighting for her life. Allie ends up stabbing Zep in the leg, and then Danny- With scissors. Yes. Do you think it'd be better if they were open or closed? Open. (sighs) No, because if they're closed, think of how much bigger of a hole they make. I'd want them open. But Danny Clever comes in to save the day. You just said Danny Clever. Clever? (laughs) Danny Clever. (laughs) Um, So Allie unties Diana all the way now. Danny Glover's in there. There's lots of shots going back and forth. Diana and Allie get up and they run, which is so smart because most of the time they stick around and they're like, I'll help you. No, just run. Mm -hmm. (laughs) The guy with the gun can handle this. Yeah, get to safety. But the guy with the gun can't handle it because his gun jams. Uh, So instead, he just tackles Zep. And Larry's hearing this whole thing and he's on the floor and he's like, yep, well, my family's dead. Uh, Zep gets the upper hand on Danny Glover in their little fight, and he smashes a flower vase over his head. Now he takes off running, and he's like, Mrs. Gordon, Diana, I'm going to kill your husband now. (laughs) He wants to kill someone. Yeah, he's really amped about killing. Um, He's limping because he got stabbed and tackled and stuff. Uh, Danny Glover gets up, and he runs and moans. And then uh, we see Lawrence get zapped. Mm -hmm. He's getting electrocuted now. Yeah. But who's controlling it? I don't know. Because Zep's... Zep's gone. He's fighting for his life. Lawrence passes out. Uh, Zep and Danny Glover are now in a car chase. It's the worst car chase in movie history. It's really bad. It looks like they're going 12 miles per hour. There's really shitty cuts back and forth between their vehicles. Yes. Um, Adam's struggling against his chains. Oh, and then he tells Lawrence, get up, I need you. He wants his friend back. Yeah. And Adam starts throwing some like rocks and pebbles and stuff. And Lawrence wakes up, even though the screaming didn't work. He's like, "Eh, a pebble hit me. (laughs) Maybe he just needed to be touched. Maybe. So the car chase ends, thankfully. Uh, Zep runs into a raw sewage sign place. And there's a ringing phone. And Zep bars himself in the warehouse with a sliding door. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I didn't know really how to explain it. Lawrence wants the phone and very poorly acts like he's going to try to get it with the box. Mm-hmm. But he makes no attempt whatsoever. Yeah, he's just... <laughs> he's given up at this point. Yeah. Well, now Zep shoots at Danny Glover some more. Lawrence is like, my family needs me. And he's pulling at his chain again. And there's quick cuts back and forth between... The chase scene between Zepp and Danny Glover and the shitty room. We see Lawrence start making a tourniquet from his shirt. And he starts sawing through the bottom of his leg. Mm -hmm. While biting on his shirt. Mm -hmm. I mean, at least he's a surgeon. He knows where to cut. Yeah. But you've already dulled the shit out of that blade. Uh Uh-huh. How I can't. I think I would have gone for breaking my foot. Like, be like, yeah. Adam, can you slide me that toilet tank lid and then just smash the hell out of your foot? Like, and- do you think you have the will to be able to do something like that? I know I don't. If you and Nolan were, like, on the chopping block, I could break my foot. 
I couldn't cut it off. Oh. Because I think cutting it off, I would pass out. Yeah. But I think I could smash my foot to bits Mm -hmm. and pull it through the chain. I would just be there in a corner dying. (laughs) Because, like, I can't even, like, pluck my own eyebrows. (laughs) I, I can handle pain, but I can't handle pain I've inflicted on myself. I can get that. Except that sometimes I just pull nose hairs to keep myself awake. Ooh. Like if I'm at work and I'm like, I'm tired. Here. Just rip a nose hair out. It's weird. Yeah. I learned it from Freaks and Geeks. Really? Yeah. From Mar- Martin Starr. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, uh, where were we? There were quick cuts back and forth. Oh, we're talking about him cutting his foot off. Yep. Okay. So Zepp knocks down Danny Glover. They fight over the gun. Danny Glover beats the shit out of Zepp. Mm-hmm. He's uh, a bigger guy. But Danny Glover gets shot. Uh, Larry gets the bullet. And he's like, ooh, look, look, I've got my bullet. Okay, now earlier when they were talking about the poison in the blood, I thought, why would if you stuck the bullet in the cigarette and he lit it, would that do anything? Probably not, because cigarettes don't actually like... Burn that hot? Burn very hot. These are the things I think about. I could see thinking about that. Danny Glover dies. Zepp limps away. Larry puts the bullet into the gun. But did you notice? The gun's empty. Mm -hmm. There was no expended shell in the revolver. Oh, I I don't know anything about guns. So so I wouldn't have caught that. That guy didn't shoot himself in the head. No. Because there would have been a cartridge in there. See, like in my mind, it like flings out. Oh, no. Not in a revolver. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that kind of gives us a clue that some fuck shit's going mm-hmm. down. Larry puts the bullet in the empty gun. Uh, then Larry shoots Adam. No, Larry has become a zombie at this point. Yes. <laughs> uh, he. I, I get that they were trying to convey that he had lost a lot of blood, but he is so white. Yes. He looks like the first zombie in Night of the Living Dead. Yes. <laughs> So he shoots at him, and then he's a terrible actor again. He's, I've done it. Now show them to me. <laughs> Ellie goes to a neighbor, and the neighbor calls the cops. Mm-hmm. The shitty room door opens, and it's Zepp. And Larry threatens him and shoots the dry gun at him, and Zepp checks at him, and he's like, nah, you're too late. And Lawrence is like, why, Zepp? Why? He tells him he's going to kill him like a hundred times first. Yeah. And then he's like, why did you do this to my family? Oh, poor Lawrence. And Zepp's like, it's the rules. <laughs> Those are the rules. And Adam's alive, and he wrestles with Zepp a little bit, and then he beats him to death with the toilet tank lid. Mm-hmm. Which I think would be more disturbing to me than breaking my own foot. Mm-hmm. I don't think I could kill somebody with, like, blunt that oh. damage like that. Like, blunt force trauma. Yeah. No. It would be bad. Um, so, yeah, he beats Zepp to death. Um, he was actually beating a garbage bag filled with blood. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. I, I did like how the blood was splattering up on yeah. him as he did it. So Adam's wounded in the shoulder, we find out. That was a smart choice by Lawrence. Yeah. I, I don't know if... It was intentional or not. I don't not. know if he was really aiming <laughs> at that point, but um, Lawrence is like, okay, I'm gonna go get help. And he's crawling out of the room and Adam's like, dude, don't. No. Yeah. Like, you are going to die halfway there. Uh (laughs) You're not even going to make it out the door. And he's like, don't worry, I'm going to bring someone back. So he crawls out. This is the scene where I'm pretty sure they had Will Ferrell come in. Because (laughs) when when he's crawling out and he just like leans back or like turns his head back and he's like, don't worry, I'll get help. I don't know. It just feels very Will Ferrell. (laughs) Adam searches Zepp's body, and he finds his wallet, but that's no help. You know, he's checking it out, checking it out, and he finds a tape recorder. And now we get the Game Over score playing in the movie, which is so good. I didn't pay attention to that one. Oh, you're going to have to just, like, look it up on YouTube. Okay. The the music for the Game Over is so good. So we see Zepp's storyline start to play out. He was actually filled with a slow-acting poison which he couldn't get the antidote for unless he did what Jigsaw wanted him to do. Adam realizes what's going on, and then the dead body stands up off the floor. Yeah. 
and it peels off a latex fake scalp and that we're like oh he wasn't dead he wasn't dead because he didn't shoot himself because the gun was empty we find out that the man laying on the floor the whole time was jigsaw Mm -hmm. and he tells adam the key to that chain is in the bathtub but we already saw saw it go down the drain then what happens did you say that John was the cancer patient from the hospital? No, not yet. Oh. <laughs> uh, so it's kind of revealed to us through flashbacks that Zep met John and was like, wow, this guy's cool. Mm-hmm. And Dr. Gordon was the doctor that was being all insensitive Yeah. Just, about John. Just treating John like a number, not a patient. Yeah. And John is Jigsaw. So then we get quick shots of the entire story, kind of tying everything together for us. And uh, Adam's like, okay, I'm going to shoot this guy because Zep has a gun. Mm -hmm. And he tries to shoot him, but then he gets shocked again. So obviously Jigsaw was the one controlling the shocks. Mm -hmm. Adam kind of collapses when there's flashes of the movie, of pictures from the movie Mm -hmm. going over, which I didn't really understand. Like I said, I think it was just trying to, like, bring Bring the story back around. Yeah. Then we get the voiceover again. The most people are so ungrateful to be alive, but not you. Not anymore. Jigsaw strolls out of the room. Adam's screaming. And then Jigsaw just turns and looks at him and says, game over. And then slams the door shut. And we hear Adam screaming. And then the end credits roll. And and there's no music. It's just Adam screaming. Yeah. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. If you would have told me when we first saw this movie that someday I would watch it and be like, man, that was good. I would have told you you were on all of the crack. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so for a body count, we have six. Um, Paul died in the razor wire trap. Mark died in the flammable jizz immolation. Uh Cellmate guy was stabbed a lot of times with a scalpel and eviscerated. His name was Donnie. Donnie? Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, Sing, multiple shotgun blast to the head. That's not good. Uh, Danny Glover, shot. Um, Zepp was fatally wounded with a toilet tank lid over and over and over and over. Mm-hmm. Squishy sounding. Did you realize something about your list? It's all men. Oh, that's very different for a horror movie. It's very different. I didn't even notice. Yeah, there's, it's all men. Women get terrorized, though. Well, <laughs> but she's a survivor. She is. Reactions after watching it again? No rating yet. No I, rating. I know the rules. No rating. It says right here on my sheet. No, no rating. No rating. <laughs> um, it's way better than I remember watching it the first time. Um. And it's not as gory as I remember. Mm-hmm. So I <laughs> said, so maybe now I'm less sensitive. And since movies of this gore are more common now. Yeah. Um, I like that it was kind of a cop drama. Yeah, it was really more of a cop drama than a horror movie. Yes. And that's, I said, with a higher budget, I think they could have easily made something comparable to Seven. The acting definitely needed work. But I, I wrote down, too, that the script was kind of meh. Yeah. It felt kind of rushed. Um, but I think they did an amazing job with what they had. Well, in the, like the quick edits, like the quick cuts Mm -hmm. and everything, like you said earlier in the Amanda scene, they did a lot with a little. Mm -hmm. Well, Um, that, that was something cheap. It's easy to splice in quick little cuts like that. mm -hmm. I I liked what it tried to do, which was just keep you guessing the whole time. Mm -hmm. And I thought they accomplished that. Um, I will say though. After watching it again and kind of thinking about, like, what would I want from this movie? Mm-hmm. Um, I'd really want more Jigsaw. Like, it just kind of left me wanting more. Yeah. I was like, well, would I want more of that guy? Because we don't know anything about him. No. Which, just that he has cancer and he's really good at playing dead. Yeah. I thought the score and the music was pretty. Yeah. Yeah. But the game over music is phenomenal. It leaves you with a... A feeling. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, after you're done watching it, you're just uncomfortable. It's a little grimy. Yeah. You want to shower. Yeah. It's because you've been in that dirty bathroom for however long. 
And the screen swipes. Yeah. Pretty cheesy. Except for that one with the car. The car one was good. So you want to move on to some production facts? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. The original idea for the movie was just to have two people trapped in an elevator with each other for the entire movie. Lee Winnell was actually having bad migraines and went to a neurologist and he imagined having brain cancer and that news being broken to him. And then he was like, huh, how would this Jigsaw character I've come up with react to that? Mm -hmm. Um, Juan didn't intend to make torture porn. He wanted to make a mystery thriller with just real quick scenes of torture, but they didn't have the money for that. Low budget equals horror. They initially only had $30,000 to make the movie. And they couldn't get any funding in Australia, so they were like, well, let's try L.A. Uh, They spent $5,000 of their own money to make a seven-minute short film and then shipped it out with the script, which... That was smart. Yeah, that was a very smart idea. It was turned down by several studios because they insisted that Lee Whannell play Adam and that James Wan direct it, or they would not sell the script. Mm -hmm. And... They said people were passing on them left and right. They're like, no, we want the movie. We don't want you. Yeah. And they're like, well, package deal. We just want your intellectual property. Yeah. So the producers of this movie ended up starting a brand new company just to release this movie. I didn't know that. That's betting big. That's, yeah. That paid off for them. Yeah. They put a second mortgage on their office building and they gave... James Wan and Lee Winnell, complete creative control and 25% of the net profit. That's ballsy. Yeah. Um, Like, they must have really, really believed in them. mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Paul, the flammable jizz man, Mm -hmm. um, he was actually the first choice for Jigsaw. Oh. But he turned it down. He just wanted to be in it for a moment. Yes. Because he didn't believe in it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. The uh, movie was shot in only 18 days. Uh, the bathroom set was the only set they actually built. Um, the bathroom scenes were filmed chronologically in only six days mm-hmm. with no tripod and no steady cam. Yeah. They filmed all of that in six days. That had to have been a very intense six days of filming. Yeah. And especially, like, they filmed it chronologically, Mm -hmm. so they started at the beginning, and then, like, these guys were literally put through the ringer. Yeah. They were falling into madness. Yeah. Danny Glover was only on the set for two days. That's insane, because he's, like, an integral part of the story. Yeah. He's in a lot of scenes Mm -hmm. for only being there two days. Um, Most of the aesthetic of the film was accidental and just caused by the lack of budget. Um, The gritty look wasn't intentional. And the, like, quick cuts to the newspaper and the security footage, they just didn't have anything else. So they just put it in for filler. Yeah. They were like, uh, what do we put in here? And they're like, make it look like security camera footage. It worked. (laughs) Uh, So moving on to goofs. I only know- Oh, I've got some more facts. You gotta give me time to give some facts, too. It's about me, Mandy. Um, Lionsgate, they hold a blood drive. Every time a movie comes out. I did not. I've never heard of this before. I hadn't either. So Lionsgate held a blood drive and it's called Give Till It Hurts. And the first time when they did it for this movie, they collected 4,249 pints of blood. That's awesome. That's so awesome. That's really cool. I I was reading and it's something they've continued to do throughout each movie. And I'm like, that's kind of cool. I wonder if you get like a free like movie ticket if you do it. Yeah. Or maybe like a little collectible. Yeah. Um, No dummy was used for the dead body in the bathroom. Tobin Bell laid down, face down for all of the scenes. Can you imagine laying on that floor for six days? No. And he was, what, probably late 50s, early 60s? Yes. That's crazy. That's insane. That's it. That's all I have for facts. You can go to your goofs now. Okay. Did you have any goofs? I didn't go back and look, but I'm pretty sure that the clock jumped from like 6 to 6.06. Oh, really? Like when... The clock in the apartment. Uh Uh-huh. I'm pretty sure at one point it jumped. Mm. That was the only thing I really saw. Um, I noticed the stains on Adam's shirt. (laughs) Did they move around? Yeah, a lot. Eh. Like cut to cut, they were different. Yeah. Um, But I can forgive that knowing that they shot all of that in six days. Mm -hmm. Lawrence loads the gun, but there isn't a spent shell in the Mm -hmm. gun. So he should have noticed that. 
I, like I said, I wouldn't have noticed. Yeah, he's a surgeon, not a shooter. Mm-mm. Adam's gunshot wound also changes position. Did it? Yeah. Like, it was, like, left shoulder kind of high, and then more towards his chest, and then almost by his armpit. It, just, it jumps around. Yeah. They weren't taking Polaroids for... No. There was no... I don't think there was a continuity editor. No. Okay, so final thoughts? I'm actually pretty impressed. Mm-hmm. Like, I watched it twice in a week, and I didn't mind it. Yeah. And knowing more about it made me appreciate it more. And this was the movie you were like, God, why do we have to cover that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, just wait till we get to like five. <laughs> um, what would you rate it? I give it an eight out of ten. Really? Yeah. I, I, I honestly enjoyed it. Wow. You rated it higher than me. Really? I said seven. Mm. So we have an aggregate score of a seven and a half out of ten. Yeah. Which is like, I think the IMDb was 7.6. 7. 7.6 or 7.4. Yeah. So we're right there. So Mandy, in this movie, who are you? I want to know who you think I am first. Did you not write it down? No. Oh, I wrote down who I am and who you are. No, I don't write it down. I just kind of think of it. Okay. Um, For you? <laughs> don't be insulted, but um, you're Dr. Gordon. No. Yeah, you are. Why? Because you're just like weird. <laughs> <laughs> I put down that I'm sing because I'm so anxious to do my job that I leave my coworker in the dust to chase a bad guy and get myself killed because of it. I could see you being sing mm-hmm. and said, s- swinging that shotgun around. Or it could be j- be jigsaw because I really like to lay around. Yeah. Oh, laying down's the best. Mm-hmm. Um I'm going to say that I'm Adam. No. I put you down as Danny because you can't let go of the good old days. Oh, that's true. <laughs> like, God, you remember when I was a cop? Yeah. <laughs> no, but I was just thinking Adam because I always try to make a quip. Yeah. And get a dig. Um, Yeah. I think that's it. I think that's it. So in closing, did you want to read the socials again or do you want me to? I can do it because I wrote it in Mandy language. Okay, (laughs) go for it. You can find us on Facebook at Franchise Frights Pod, Instagram at Franchise Frights Pod, Twitter or X, which you might soon be paying for, at F Frights Pod, Snapchat F Frights Pod, and tune in next time because we're going to cover A Nightmare. On Elm Street. I'm really excited for that one. I am too. I like Freddy. Me too. He's fun. Well, so, yeah. Until tomorrow. Remember, Remember, they they always come come back. back. Oh, we nailed that one.